A very warm welcome to this online service for the 14th Sunday after Trinity. There's a really beautiful phrase at the end of the Gospel reading for today, when the people said of Jesus, he has done everything well. Now that really is a lifestyle worth looking at. So let's pray together. God, our Heavenly Father, we are here to worship you and learn more of your love for us through Jesus Christ. Renew us by your Spirit, that we may grow in hope, faith and love. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Wherever you are, whether you're feeling joyful or weary, worn and sad, a welcome from Jesus awaits as we sing, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. As we pray together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now hear our Gospel reading for today, coming from the Gospel of Mark and read by Peter. Nikki will then give us her reflection which will be followed by music from Frida and Cathy. The reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, beginning at verse 24. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered the house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. 
The woman was a Greek born in Syrian uh, Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found a child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosed and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, as I speak, help us to listen for your voice. Amen. In our Gospel today, we meet two people whose voices are not usually heard. Those who knew the deaf and mute man well had learnt to interpret his gestures, but generally he would have been excluded from most conversations and thus from his community. The woman, whose daughter was possessed by a demon, had a physical voice, but that voice would rarely have been heard, especially by a Jewish man. In Israel, at that time, voices held priority, which went something like this. Jewish men, Jewish women, the children, the sick or unclean, and finally Gentiles. So as a Gentile woman, she should not have even been able to speak to Jesus, let alone be heard. And yet Jesus heard both and responded to their prayer. In the case of the man, Jesus took him aside and using visual actions enabled him to hear and speak. In the story of the Syrophoenician woman, we have a response that is more challenging. There are many interpretations of Jesus' response, some saying that he was being playful, likening the woman to a much-loved puppy, others that Jesus meant the insult. It is important we think about this, but what I want us to focus on today is the amazing fact that Jesus stopped and listened to one who had no right or expectation of being heard. For me, this reading asks two questions. Whose voices don't we hear today? And how do we hear them? If we begin with the first question, many of us will think about the situation in Afghanistan where under the rule of the Taliban, we already see limitations in the rights of women and others to be heard or seen. We might also think of the voices of those who call out about climate change. We may hear those voices, but do we really listen? But there are many in our own neighbourhood who struggle to make their voices heard. Sometimes this will be like the man who was deaf and mute. There are still many with hearing impairments who are unable to communicate with general society. My daughter teaches children with autism, many of whom cannot speak and rely on Makaton signing or pictures to communicate. But more often we don't hear because the one who wishes to speak is not given a voice, excluded because of social issues, poverty, homelessness, prejudice because of race, gender, sexuality or some other factor. I'd like to challenge you over the next week to make note of those to whom you do not listen. Our second question asks us how, having identified the silent voices, we make sure we listen to them. Do we meet with 
and give space to those who are not like us? Or do we spend all our time with those people whose voice is most like ours? Do we learn the language that they speak, whether that's signing, gestures, or just not proper like what I speak? And of course, we remember that listening is only completed if we act on what we've heard. We know Jesus heard both characters today because both ended up receiving the healing they had requested. How can we show we've heard the voices crying in Afghanistan? What action might we take as a result of our listening? Can we support charities sending aid? Should we be writing to our MPs, asking them to challenge the government to act appropriately towards the people of Afghanistan? Are we ready to make the necessary changes in our way of living, which will show that we have heard the voices calling out about climate change? And what about the unknown voices you have identified? What action do they need you to take, other than actually listening to them? which is of course important in itself. So, a second challenge. Once you have identified the excluded voice, listen to the one who speaks and act upon what you have heard. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that you will help us to listen, to really listen. May we notice the excluded and allow them to have a voice. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All are welcome and all can share in Christ's peace. We are the body of Christ. In one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We come now to our prayers, <clears throat> which will be led by Frida. Heavenly Father, we sometimes fail to hear your voice. 
through busyness and other distractions. Sometimes we fail to recognise your voice. So in this time of prayer or conversation with you, help us to both speak and really listen to you. We give you thanks and praise for your life-giving and life-extending love. May your church help others to extend their lives and to rejoice in your world. We pray for all who are working for justice and freedom of captives. Today, Father, we pray for the uncertain and fragile situation in Afghanistan. We pray for a spirit of tolerance in that land and surrounding countries. Lord, as you raise us up, help us to lift others out of their troubles. Our God is here. He comes to save us. We pray for all those struggling as a result of fires and floods, for those who have lost everything. We give thanks and pray for those people who go to their aid, providing food and shelter, warmth and love. Our God is here. He comes to save us. Father God, we pray for this community where we live. We pray that we will be a caring community, willing to share with others. Especially we pray for all who feel isolated or cut off from others. We pray for our own homes and loved ones. Our God is here. He comes to save us. We pray for those known to us who are unwell, that they may hear your voice of comfort and feel your presence with them. We pray for all carers, that they may hear your voice of reassurance and feel your strength within them. We pray for all who mourn, that they may hear your voice of love and feel your arms around them. Our God is here. He comes to save us. Heavenly Father, we ask to love as Jesus loved. Make this the place and time, good Lord, when heaven and earth merge into one and we can grasp that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither male nor female, for all are one in Jesus Christ, and for this we praise you. Amen. And the special prayer for today, the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join all our thoughts and our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus is with us now, wherever we are and he will go before us as we enter a new week with all its challenges and will help us in sharing all we have received, his love, grace and healing. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. Jesus Christ is waiting, waiting in the streets. No one is his neighbour, all alone he eats. Listen, Lord Jesus, I am lonely too. Make me friend or stranger, fit to wait on you. Jesus Christ is raised. 
As our worship draws to a close, let us pray together. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us for his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and all those you love and pray for. Amen. So let's all go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>